Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Amy, otherwise known as Spellbound Travels. Um, so today I'm going to share with you a few ways that you can start budgeting for your next trip. I always have people asking me how I can afford to travel so often, and really it just comes down to how I'm budgeting my money and how much I'm saving while I'm living at home. Today I'm going to be walking you through a few easy ways to start budgeting for your next trip so you can see more of the world for less. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to grab a free resource that I'm going to be linking in the description below. It'll help you just budget for your next trip and get everything sorted. So let's get into it. So first thing you're going to need to write out your current expenses, so that's monthly subscriptions, groceries, food, etc and see how much you're spending each month. Next, you're going to want to choose a destination that's affordable for you. So look at the prices of flights and see what will work. Look at the return, the return fare, which is always going to be cheaper, or one-way tickets. You can also do multi-way flights where you're stopping in different countries. If you want a full video on how to save money on flights and travel through more countries for less, then let me know in the comments and I'll do a video on that next. Step three will be working out how much money you can save before your departure date. So it's important to have a specific time in mind or a general idea of when you're going to be leaving so that way you know how much money you'll have in the bank before you hit the road. Once you have all that info, that's when the real research starts. You're going to break it down into five categories. So number one is transportation, which will be probably the most expensive. This is flights, buses, trains, taxis, anything that will get you to where you need to go. Number two is accommodation, which I'm sure you know is also a huge expense when you're traveling. So this will be hostels, Airbnbs, hotels, whatever it may be. And um, if you can stay with a friend or someone you know in a different country, that will save you a lot of money on accommodation. Next is food and drinks. So take a look at hostels or places where you're staying to see if they're going to include free breakfast or if there's free drinks, stuff like that, so you can work out how much you're going to be spending there and have a good idea. Um, it's also important to look at the prices of food in the local country. So to have an idea of how much a local meal will cost, street food, versus the restaurant pricing that you might see. Next up, you're gonna take a look at activities. So this might be a planned tour with a tour operator um, doing like island hopping or going on a safari, things like that. They're all gonna add up really quickly, so just make sure you have a general idea of how much those things will cost. And if you guys want some more information about how you can do those activities for cheap, just let me know because I have a few different ways to work around going on tour operated um, activities and actually finding ways to do it on your own for a lot cheaper. Lastly, you're just gonna wanna have a miscellaneous section. So in this section, you're gonna account for things that might go wrong. So I usually keep about $1,000 put aside as a general rule of thumb after having a few things go wrong and not having enough money. So that's always good to keep that amount aside. It might be less or more for you depending on how much you want to have as like a backup. Um, then also account for travel insurance. That's super important. I've used it once or twice now and it's great to have, especially in case your luggage goes missing or something like that happens and you need to get a bunch of new stuff or if a flight gets canceled. So once you have all the potential costs for your trip, you're just going to want to total it up and see how much it comes to. This will be your magic number to work towards when you're budgeting and planning for your trip. So now you're going to want to do some basic math and go back to where we started. See how much money you're going to have in the bank by time you leave by subtracting your monthly expenses by how much money you're going to be making by time you leave. Then you're also going to have to take those monthly expenses into account when you leave. So if you're paying rent somewhere and you're going for a two or three month stay, 
um, in a different country, you might think about subletting your apartment so that you're not going to be paying that rent price throughout the time that you're gone. So that just about sums it up. I don't really have a, a super specific way of budgeting. I just kind of map it out that way and I find that it always helps and works for me. You'll find when you do your research that backpacking and travel doesn't have to be super expensive. You can do it for quite cheap and Southeast Asia is a great place to start if you're new to travel. I have so many itineraries for different countries in Asia if you want to start there and look at my blog for different locations and places that you can look to. If you're interested in seeing how I stay on top of a budget while I'm actually traveling, I'll make that into a new video. Just leave that, um, leave a comment below and let me know because um, that will just be a whole new video and different topic to touch on. And lastly, before you go, I've attached a printable worksheet on my blog. It's in my latest post, so if you go to spellboundtravels.com, you'll find it linked right there in the post. You can print that off and use it for a way to keep you accountable and plan and budget for your next trip. I'll be back next week with a new video, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you then. Bye! <laughs>